pray with me. Oh Lord our God, you truly are the gentle shepherd. You are Jesus, the one that loves us, that knows us and sees us and claims us as your own. So Lord, we just pause in this moment to say thank you for loving us enough to give us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, just for giving us a chance to breathe, live and have our being. So now, Lord, as we gather in this moment to hear a word from you, I ask that you help me and guide me. I learned my lips afresh, settle my heart and my spirit so that all of us will remember that you are our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. It's in your matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I was studying the scripture this morning, or all throughout the week, the Lord changed the sermon title on me as I read it. It was simply called a, sem a second chance. And I'm just curious, have you ever received a second chance? Another chance to make up for a wrong that you've done, uh, another opportunity to make a different decision, a second chance to make another choice. Oh, I don't know, maybe you were heading fully committed to one direction and God decided to take you and shift you to another direction. Or maybe you got a second chance to rethink a situation and because of that shift, you made a better choice, I don't know. Maybe you got a second chance to redo life because sometimes we gotta redo our life, yes? Amen. Maybe you got a second chance at a job, a relationship, an opportunity, somehow, some way, God gave you another chance so that life could be better and not the same. Have you ever had a second chance and are you thankful for that second chance. Amen. I know I am, I just say thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus again and again for that second chance, that third chance, the fourth chance, if I'm really honest, because I could not open that door by myself, I could not make it through something by myself, I could not even imagine what life would be if I stayed stuck where I was. I'm grateful Lord for another chance. Yes. The amazing thing for me about these second chances, they seem to come in a variety of ways. Mm. Yet, often for a singular purpose. I say seem because in essence, offering a second chances from God is often presented as a call and response. Mm -hmm. They begin with an invitation which ultimately leads you to a greater good. Mm -hmm. However, the determining factor is based upon how a person or a group may respond. Take for example, our beloved dear Jonah. Mm. Our passage today encounters Jonah from the point of his second call. And I'm not sure if you know his full story, for he doesn't show up in our lectionary often. And many times when people hear the story of Jonah, they think about the children's story about Jonah and the whale. But even as you listen to that story, it's still wrong. In essence, just to help us all know, Jonah was a prophet sent by God to explain a simple eight word prophetic message to a people he wholeheartedly despised. He didn't like them, he didn't want to go to them, and he wasn't even trying to think about them. And you know what? The truth of the matter, he had a good reason. The reason was Nineveh, the place that he was supposed to go, those people were part of the Assyrians and they completely destroyed the northern kingdom where he hung out and lived. And then they were currently in the process of brutalizing his brothers and sisters in the southern kingdom, terrorizing them in such a way he truly despised so much. When God gave him this eight minute, eight word prophetic message, he went the other way to Tarnish. And the story is told, he goes to Tarnish, he gets on a boat, he gets kicked off the boat, he gets swallowed by a fish, someone say not whale, fish. If you read the scripture, it says big fish. It says no whale. Fish. And while he's in the belly of the whale, fish. Fish. just want to make sure y'all were listening. Just make sure that y'all were listening. So while he was in the belly, he had to come to Jesus in the fish. And the Lord heard his prayer, vomit him out on dry land, and then gave him a second chance. Yes, yes. That alone, beloved, should make someone shout. Yes. Because just in case you think you can go outside God's will, trust in me sure, wherever you are, God will heal you and still offer you another yes. chance. Yes. Amen. So now this is where we have Jonah. Jonah's now in his second chance and he has a second opportunity to give the message to the people and he's giving it to them with an attitude. His heart is not in it, 
He really doesn't care, but he's just responding and reciting these words again. 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 40 days more, Nineveh shall be overthrown. 40 days more, Nineveh shall be overthrown. All right. He gives that message again and again, half-heartedly, not really caring whether they will change their mind, but guess what happens? From that eight-word sermon, a whole nation, a king, everybody living, every animal, they fasted, they repented, and they were saved. And the scripture says, for God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways. Yeah. God changed God's mind about the calamity that God had said, and God would bring upon them, and God did not do it. Mm-hmm. Most people would be so excited and say, hallelujah, thank you for salvation. Not Jonah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Jonah was pissed. He was really upset. And in chapter four, which we will never hear in the lectionary, so I invite you to go read it, but it says something like this. This is his prayer to God. Oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled to Tarnish at the beginning, for I knew you were a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, relenting from punishment. And now, oh Lord, please take my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. My God. A whole nation Mm. repented because of of an eight word sermon that made most of us leave this church right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he was upset because God gave them a second chance. I share this overview with you so that you will praise God and thank God for every second chance. Amen. Because, beloved, second chances are a call and response invitation to God's salvation for our lives and for God's salvation for the world. It may seem crazy and amazing how again and again, Jonah gladly received every chance he got. But he was upset and he didn't want it for another. It's amazing how he responds with an attitude and half-heartedly doing what God says and God blesses tremendously. Oh my God. I am grateful for a God who believes in offering not only second and third, but up to 90 and 100 chances to us all. Because ultimately God's purposes and God's salvation is for all of us. God believes and knows that we really need second and third chances. God knows that God has to grant it again and again and again. That's why you get new mercies every morning. And I don't know about you, but I know my life is better for every chance that I'll get. I believe your life is better too. And I know our church and our world would be so much better for these second chances, but I am so grateful that even when people don't think I deserve a second chance, that's not where God sits. I'm grateful that their opinions, their judgments, their prejudices, anything they want to say or think about me or anything I do cannot stop God from giving me a second chance. Because the truth of the matter is, the reason why God gives us all second chance is God knows that who we are today is not ultimately what we're going to be. God understands that every moment of our lives, that times we are wonderful and fearfully made and other times we are broken and crazy and sick, God knows and God loves us enough to want to make sure that when God calls us, we will respond with a yes and not with an attitude. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, God does all of this, giving us a second chance so God can get the glory in the earth. Hallelujah, amen. I'm clear that God offers it to all. And I mean all. It doesn't matter how evil you are. Doesn't matter how prejudiced, how hurtful, how destructive, no matter how bad we think you are, no matter who you are, God still offers a second chance to all. Yes. Listen to the call. 40 days no more and none of us shall be overthrown. The call is you can be all of that, but you can't stay that way and still get blessed with another no, chance. Not at all. You have to actually be turned around and repent for all that you do. And so for all those evil structures and the most evil whatever, you name it who it is, if they do not turn, 
And if they can persist in their evil ways, trust and believe, they shall not get a second chance. But how can they know or hear if you who may be called to go to them don't offer a second chance? How will they even be aware of the fact they might need a second chance if we don't counteract and fight those structures with righteousness, joy, and peace, and shade? This is what God says, and how you are is not supposed to be. Mm. How can they get their second chance if we won't go as a people? Because the truth is, God is a gracious and merciful God. God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, relenting from punishment. Thanks be to God. Oh, and the longer that I live, and as long as I keep serving the Lord as best as I can, I am beginning to understand that second chances are not just for when something goes wrong in our lives or in our world. I recognize that this call and this invitation to respond is also for when God wants to give us another chance so that we can go to the next level. Yes. I'm mindful that when we cannot see what God is doing, we won't respond correctly. Mm. We could act like Jonah, and I don't want to put Jonah fully down because Jonah had a good reason. He just got stuck in his anger, and we know that's not a good thing. But I like the example of the disciples. They responded in a way that allowed them to receive the healing and the life worth living from second chances. Because the reason why you get a second chance is because God knows life is fully worth living. Yes, amen. And so the gospel offers a second chance in a way I confess I didn't see at first. It begins with the first part where Mark says, now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Mm -hmm. Our second chance comes from Jesus' yeah. pro proclamation. He proclaims now is the time. Mm. Yes. Not Kronos time, but Kairos time. We all understand what Kairos time is, yes? It's the right time, it's the appropriate time, it's the time that God sets for things, and it's the time where second chances are usually most formed and created and then offered to us. It's the time in preparation where God prepares us. It's the time of watching and waiting to see what God will do. It's the time of being reshaped by our conversations and our questions so that the things that we raise become seeds in our soul that makes us ready for when the moment comes just right. We'll be ready with our, set, our yes. It's the time and place where God does transformation, Kairos time. And Jesus ushered in that Kairos time when Jesus came to the world, hallelujah. And every time he taught, he healed, he challenged one another and did miracle upon miracle, wonder upon wonder. Jesus ushered in this new time for the people of God yes, yes. so that they will be open and ready for when he called and they had to respond. Mm. Interesting enough, he came near, thanks be to God, to our brokenness. Yes to our hopes, to our dreams, even to our disappointments and our pain. He came near and longed for what we needed most. He longed for our hearts to say yes when he called us. He offers a second chance and he said, you know what, in order to get ready to fully receive this thing, you need to repent and believe. Amen. Yes. Repent, I wanna pause for a moment. I'm mindful that it's supposed to be an ongoing act in our lives. We should all live lives of repentance, and I'm sure you do every day, right? Amen. I heard an amen, but I didn't hear a yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you may say, well, pastor, I'm not sure about what you're saying right now because truth of the matter is I'm a good person. You know, I read my Bible, I pray, I tithe. I help most people and I try to watch my words. I don't need to repent for every single thing I do. I just, you know, I, God knows my heart. God knows me. And I would say, beloved, that is so true. However, we repent for two primary reasons. 
One, because Jesus said so. Yes. Jesus wouldn't tell us to repent and believe if he didn't think we need to repent. Mm -hmm. Newsflash. Two, it helps us fully embrace the second chance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Recently on Right Now Media, and I don't know how many of you have signed up, but I did, and I'm watching this Pastors in Leadership workshop on it, because I'm trying to be a better pastor for you and leader, and in this particular one, it called Leadership and Repentance, and I'm like, God, why is he preaching that to us? <laughs> and here's what he taught. He says we're supposed to live a life of ongoing repentance as clergy and as leaders because we transgress, we sin, and we have iniquity. Mm -hmm. Those are everyday words, don't you? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm transgression with you. I'm tired of your iniquity. Yeah, no, we don't talk like that, do we? <laughs> but what he talked about was those hidden ways that we are not aware of. Amen, amen. Transgressions is a willful rebellion, knowing the right thing and choosing to do the wrong thing. That was Jonah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where most of us get stuck on and why we think we don't have to live a life of repentance. We're like, we're, we're being intentional not to wrongfully and willfully disobey God. But comes sin, and it means missing the mark. And he put it like this for clergy. We will love you, pastor, serve, give you again and again and again, and say, I will pray for you and maybe not actually go home and pray for you. Mm. He says, missing the mark is when you promise that you will do something for God on God's behalf and then don't do it. Wow. He says, missing the mark is when you agree in prayer and say, God, I promise I won't no more if you just, mm -hmm. and God does, and you do it again. Mm -hmm. He says, sometimes we have to repent for missing the mark. But then he talked about iniquity, and that one I was like, huh? Iniquity means twisted out of shape from its original design. You know how your arm sometimes can get twisted out of shape and it will be stuck and it won't work? And as much as you try to use it, it just, it won't work because it's twisted out of shape until it's reset. He says sometimes, and that's more of a spiritual thing, Usually, the places we get twisted out of shape is not a physical thing in our walk with God. It's an emotional, it's a spirit, it's a heart, it's a mental thing. And when those things are twisted out of shape and twisted not the way God would have us be, we tend to actually do some iniquity. So for example, if my mind is twisted about you and how I think about all the wrong things you've done and don't think about the good things you've done, I might treat you based on those wrong things and not on the good things. Twisted. Right. Right. Hey. And so it's for those times when we willfully disobey God. It's the times that we miss the mark. It's the time when we get twisted out of shape. Anybody suffers with any of those things from time to time? Yes. Yes. Guess what? A life of repentance is for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And what he reminds us that we have to repent and believe. We repent and we believe all that Jesus said that Jesus would do. We believe all that Jesus is and believe all that Jesus wants for us. We believe the good news that the reason why Jesus came was to save our souls and to make sure all of the world will know that he is alive. And believing and repenting makes us ready, just ready to say yes more often than no. Because the truth of the matter is if you live a life of repentance and you believe all that the Lord says is possible, it's really hard for you not to be gracious to someone else. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for you not to see someone in their brokenness and recognize there's still more to them. Mm -hmm. It's hard for you to treat someone horribly and mean and not offer the opportunity for them to receive the second chance and offer them a second chance when you know that they're just like you. Yeah. And so this second chance, beloved, is a chance for all of us because when we say yes, nations change. Amen. 
When we say yes, lives are transformed. When we say yes, the world is a better place. And right now, there is enough people saying no to the Lord who needs somebody to shout yes. Yes, yes, yes to the Lord. And the reason why we get a second chance again and again and again is so that when Jesus says, come and follow me, you'll immediately go. Yes. There are times it's easy to immediately go. I acknowledge that, because it's the things we like. It's harder to immediately go when you don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. I'm often curious why the disciples said yes. Mm -hmm. true. True. First, I'm really curious by the first two, Simon and Andrew. They were poor brothers. If they left their fishing, I don't know how they were gonna get paid. Yeah. They weren't like James and John, whose papa owned a whole lot of money and had a fishing company. So I wonder why they said yes. Until I remember the other part of repentance. The other part of repentance is reorienting your life to God's direction. The other part of repentance is turning from one way and going another way. The point of repentance is to reorient yourself to God's greater and to leave even if it was good behind for better. And they understood that Jesus was good enough and worthy of good news that if they turned towards Jesus, whatever happened on the other side would be better. They understood that if they chose to follow Jesus, life would be better on the other side. They didn't know what it would look like. And I don't know if they really cared. They didn't care until they started walking on the journey because you listen to all their, their conversation and you wonder, like, did they really say yes? Did they know that what they signed up for? No, they couldn't know what they signed up for, but they said yes. And the truth of all of us, if we decide to follow Jesus and say yes to his invitation to follow him, though no one else goes, no matter where he goes, I promise you on the other side, on the other side of your yes, would be a world full of blessings, not just for you, but for the world. I'm convinced that if we decide to follow Jesus, we will see and be so thankful for every second and third and fourth chance because the Lord is not expecting us to be perfect as we follow. The Lord just wants us to follow and go. Yes. So beloved, if God gave you a second chance, when God calls and invites you, say yes. When you get a second chance, be mindful that your yes can change a world. When God calls you, and invites you for a second time. Be ready with an immediate yes. May God bless you as you live into your second chance. Amen. 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 Thank you.